and we're specifically going to discuss how to become an ML engineer. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Luke. I'm a software engineer at Exponent. Uh, I'm joined today by Nico Thibault, a senior machine learning engineer at Hired. Um, Nico, can you tell me a bit about yourself and Hired? Absolutely, uh, hello Luke. I'm in the machine learning team at Hired. I've been there for uh, three years and um, Hired in a nutshell, is the largest AI-driven marketplace that matches tech talent with the world's most innovative companies. Our platform combines intelligent job matching with unbiased career counseling to find the job that candidates love. The best part is that it's free for job seekers. So how have you seen AI and machine learning as a career path evolve over the years? And what do you think is fueling that growth? Well, we have seen it evolving quite a bit uh, with the rest of the team. Um, it sure has evolved and it's, it keeps evolving actually. The job changes every day. We are seeing a lot of practitioners who are shifting from pure data science to machine learning. I would say it's the biggest trend that, I, that we are seeing right now. The industry is becoming more mature. Deployments to production are become more frequent. Um, ROI is found more often as well. And so the job is changing every day because of that. Uh, as someone who took their last machine learning course in college and haven't done a lot of machine learning since, uh, what kind of educational background, technical knowledge, soft skills are required to become a machine learning engineer? Well, luckily in machine learning, you can see success with um, different backgrounds. We value a lot of diversity in the team and uh, and we tend to have different people and to combine strengths um, as well as possible. And because it's still a fairly new job, it's been around for a while, but it still feels new. We're seeing people from different backgrounds um, where you need solid foundations in math and, and in computer science usually. But beyond that, you need also skills in statistical modeling, understanding probabilities and, and, and stats. Um, software development, you need to develop a sense for business, you need to become a data analyst every now and then, you need to learn about DevOps, which is a, a new trend, you get, you get to learn how to deploy your model to production smoothly. So nobody ticks all of the boxes for sure. So it's useful to try to know the basics of all those things that are required and then specialize in one or two areas are there specific degrees that a company would be looking for when hiring for these uh, positions? Probably the first bias is to look for machine learning degrees, which are fairly new, but now it's been a couple of years since um, college, colleges and boot camps started offering purely machine learning degrees. But there's few of those people, the supply does not match the demand. And so we're also seeing people from quantitative uh, fields like myself, I, I, um, I have a PhD in physics. We are seeing people from math. Uh, we are seeing people from computer science, different domains, um, software engineers, notably the transition very well into machine learning. So it, it is still very open, I would say. How can you pivot from different fields of engineering and what role is the easiest to pivot from? Well, again, it's pretty open, I would say, but, um, Folks who see a lot of success are traditional software engineers who um, still remember a bit of math or can reactivate this knowledge from their uh, college years. And if you have some experience with the craft of software engineering, because it takes years to develop that, it's extremely valuable and extremely useful in machine learning as well. And more and more um, machine learning engineer practitioners, they, they tend to develop software development skills as time goes by. Uh, even more so than pure machine learning or stat skills. So I would say if you're a software engineer, uh, the transition can be pretty smooth. That makes sense. Because I, I would assume that some uh, who go into machine learning coming from purely academia uh, might not have a background in kind of developing software applications the way that someone who has spent the last few years in industry and writing code for a living might. Absolutely. Now that someone has built the right skills, how can they find machine learning engineering jobs? Well, there, there's many ways to do that. Um, so 
of course, there's uh, several platforms where uh, you can apply, you can submit your resume. One of them on which you can find a lot of success is uh, Hired. Uh, on Hired, um, you can mention what you're looking for up front, your uh, desires, you have a wish list, uh, you can mention your expected salary and companies reach out to you within a couple of days. Um, so it's probably one of the most efficient way to find a job once you are, you're confident enough to apply for one. Great. Uh, what do these machine learning interviews usually look like? It's fairly standard, I would say. Um, it resembles to a certain extent software engineer interviews. It typically starts with one or two technical interviews, sometimes a take-home test, and then down the line after the second or third technical interview, you might have a less technical interview with someone from product, someone from the revenue side. And at the end of that, there's, uh, there's usually an interview with the hiring manager. And I would say that the technical interviews are broken down into more algorithms, software development on one side, and then pure machine learning that can involve sometimes math um, directly on a whiteboard on the other side. I'm curious to hear, what do you see as the biggest career growth opportunities in the machine learning AI space? Well, the, the field is as vibrant as ever, and there's so many possibilities these days. On the modeling side, I think that natural language processing, dealing with textual data is still booming. We are at the beginning of a revolution called the Transformers Revolution. It's a new family of models that are being very efficient at understanding language. Now, you might have heard of GPT-3 and the very impressive capabilities of this model. This is in terms of pure modeling. I would say investing in natural language processing is probably a good call. Then in terms of machine learning deployment and how, how to deploy this um, machine learning models, MLOps is growing. MLOps is this field at the intersection of DevOps and machine learning. And we see MLOps positions becoming the norm in several companies. Then in addition to that, you can be a generalist. You can totally be a generalist because machine learning is applied to so many different fields that learning the basics, the foundations of machine learning and software engineering and, and honing that uh, is a very good idea because the skills that you learn are gonna be highly transferable from one context or one industry to another one. I'm curious, once you're in a machine learning engineering job, what do you consider as the important skills to continue developing as you progress through your career? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question and a, a pretty difficult one in general. I would say that, it is a good idea to not invest too much in one specific technology that can be very appealing. It is good to always keep learning because the field is evolving so fast and to keep learning the foundations, the new modeling techniques, um, the new technologies, but not stick to one, keep an open mind and uh, be versatile as much as possible. Thanks a bunch, Nico. I think that's all we have time for today learned a lot about the state of machine learning hiring and what it takes to be a machine learning engineer. Um, I know on the exponent side, I would highly recommend for people to check out the, our machine learning course, which is gonna be linked in the description of the video. Uh, Nico, what's the best way for someone to break into the field using Hired? Well, I would say just prepare your resume, upload it to Hired. It takes a couple of minutes and then you're live on the platform and you start talking to companies, then the next step is to prepare for your interviews. Great. Well, thanks a bunch, Nico. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.